بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم. So um, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "أُطْلُ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَقِمَ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْمَعُ." So Allah says, "Recite the book that has been revealed to you, speaking to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Quran." and establish the prayer. The prayer prevents sins, shameless sins, and all kinds of evil. Now that's a powerful statement. What does that mean? Are we saying that if we pray, we're saved from evil? So we need to understand it um, in a little more depth. But before we even do that, let's say it was the case that anybody that prayed would be protected from every evil. If that was the case, how many people actually are praying in the first place? Everyone in here is in the minority. So we have this, uh, this slide here I want you to take a look at. This was a, um, a, a poll, a Pew Research poll that was done in 2017 on American Muslims and their religious practices. This question specifically asked, how many pray salah five times a day? How many Muslims, the American Muslims, pray five times a day? Not once or twice, but five times. Five times or fard, right? Yes. Yes. 42%. 42% of American Muslims pray five times a day. That means that 58%, more than half, are not praying five times a day. 30, uh, 25% were uh, answer, or 17% said some. 25% said less often, whatever that means, once. 15% said not at all. Now, if we're talking about preventing evil and preventing fahisha uh, and, you know, really shameful bad deeds, evil deeds, if the majority is not praying, then that's a serious problem. So this is a little bit eye-opening, right? Now we come back to the verse. The reality is, alhamdulillah, from, there are 42% that are praying the five daily prayers. And there are many, many thousands and thousands of Muslims who pray regularly. And it absolutely does prevent them from committing major sins. It absolutely does prevent them from committing major evils. And it guides their life so that they do the best they can. Now, we all are going to commit sins. No one is free from that. But certainly there's a, uh, there's a degree and there's a level. And many people that pray regularly, they are prevented from committing those uh, major sins and even other minor sins. So what does it mean? The word used here is tanha. That it, it doesn't mean prevents or completely stops from sins. That's the first thing to understand. It is kind of saying discourages or will allow you to be prevented from committing evils. But it didn't say unequivocally that if you just pray, you're free from sin. That's not what it means. So that's very uh, important to keep in mind. When we are regular in the prayer, then naturally it's going to give us a certain mindset. So what is the verse saying? How do we get it to help us really prevent us? When we give the prayer its due right. It's not just, if we just treat it like aerobics and, you know, make the sajda and that's it, then that's not what's being sought here. It is a prayer where the heart is present. It is a prayer where there is focus. And everything we do outside of prayer directly affects the prayer. Especially in Ramadan. So as one of my friends said, if you suffer from IBS, iftar, binge syndrome, as soon as the, the fast opens, how is the prayer? Not very good. Why? Why? Because we, we've just stuffed ourselves. You're feeling sick. In the Fajr, if you, or before Suhoor, if you're just trying to get everything in, it's very difficult to pray. It's directly related. So what we do outside the prayer directly affects what happens in the prayer. The distractions affect what happens in the prayer. Everything that we plan. Now, some people, they have like a dedicated space in their house. And this is great because it gets you in a certain mindset. That when I'm going to pray, I focus. I think we all naturally focus more in the masjid because of the essence of the masjid, right? 
That's why we pray in the masjid as much as we can. But these are little steps we can take. We've said it before. One thing to do is simply just slow down in the prayer. Just physically slow down. A lot of times, you know, I feel like we want to change the world as Muslims, but we've forgotten about the complete basics, right? If we're not praying regularly and we want to do all these things, how is the help going to come? Where is the help going to come from? The Prophet ﷺ would, would run to the prayer for his needs. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek help from Allah with patience and prayer. Now we often say the patience part, forget the prayer part. Right? So this, uh, now someone may say that, look, I do pray. I pray regularly, I pray five times a day, but you know, I'm still involved in a lot of wrong. We say to them, keep praying. It's going to eventually have an effect. Something's going to happen. How long did it take you to get your degrees? Four years? Seven years? Eight years? How many years did it take to build the business? Ten years? Fifteen years? It takes time. Don't stop it. Don't lose hope. Just keep going. Inshallah, there will be good because Allah has said that there will be if we continue to improve. The other thing is prayer. Just like everything else, it's a process. Yes, we learned the basics, right? But we continuously improve on that process. It's not just like, okay, I'm good. I have the prayer now. This also shows us the importance of the, the sunnah because they make up for the deficiencies in the fard, which we will be asked about. And of course, the first thing we're going to be asked about is the prayer. So it's good to take some time out to remind ourselves and not just sort of get you know, complacent and just take it for granted. If you pray for rakah and you're focused, that's better than praying 30 rakah. If you can pray 30 and be focused, mashallah, good. That's great. I'm not, I'm not saying not to do that. But we want to concentrate on the focus and getting the most we can. Now, the last point we'll make, and there's many we can make about prayer. The last point we can make, let's say you're praying, and maybe you get a little distracted. Maybe you kind of, you know, mind goes out, sort of comes back in. Whatever you do, when, you, when you're ending the prayer, be focused on the prayer. Because إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِيمِ Actions are by their endings. This is why we're always making dua for husnul الْخَاتِمَ For a good end. So if you're trying to get back, you're distracted, just, and I'm not, of course I'm not saying intentionally be distracted in the, in the end, just concentrate. Of course we're not saying that. But if we feel that we've kind of been going in and out and struggling, just do your very, very best at, at the end of the prayer. Have your heart present, have your mind present, know what you're doing. And inshallah, this will help. And with Allah's mercy, He will overlook our mistakes. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to feel love and comfort in the prayer the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. Adu Allahu alam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.